Welcome to the EPG Patashala, the lecture series in computer science for the postgraduate program. And this is the compiler design course where we are on module 32, which where we will be discussing about uh, the code generation algorithm using the uh, directed acyclic graph. And uh, the next uh, thing which we will talk about today's uh, module is uh, the dynamic programming approach to um, code generation. So, the objectives of this module are to understand the code generation algorithm from a DAG and to learn the dynamic programming approach to code generation, uh, where we will be looking at a contiguous uh, piece of uh, execution in a bottom up fashion, where dynamic programming strategy is adopted for um, computing the cost and choosing the appropriate uh, instruction. So, um, code generation from DAG. So, the previous modules we have talked about constructing a DAG and uh, how this DAG can be labeled using uh, labeled uh, which is nothing but uh, assigning it the label as the registers required to compute a particular interior node. And then uh, we have also looked at how to reorder the DAG so that uh, the uh, instructions can be done uh, in a uh, faster I mean in a um, can be scheduled such that the total cost of instructions is going to be less. And in addition also we have uh, seen that if you reorder the uh, code, uh, it also avoids uh, the spilling of registers where we have to swap to and from the registers. So, that is also avoided if you try to reorder the co uh, um, statements of a particular basic block. Now, here um, this algorithm uses a recursive procedure on a labeled DAG and it considers code generation based on the labels assigned to the nodes. So, this is the basis for branching and uh, choosing the appropriate instruction. So, here we are going to use uh, a stack of registers which is called as R stack and uh, that R stack will have um, registers, uh, number of registers required. Now, we already know that the root of the DAG basically contains how many registers are required to, con to compute that particular root node. So, which essentially is nothing but the total number of registers required to compute a uh, particular basic block. So, that will be pushed into a um, stack which is called as the R stack which is nothing but the register stack and you will also have a memory stack which is going to have just memory locations M0, M1 etcetera. So, that if in the case of uh, there is a failure on the registers, it will go to basically a memory based instruction. So, here the leaves, um, it, this algorithm it leaves the registers on R stack in the same order it found them. It leaves the registers on the R stack in the same order it has basically found them. So, the function uh, we are going to use here is called as a swap, uh, where uh, it will uh, look at the R stack content and then it interchange the top two registers on the stack. Okay. So, uh, this is called when we want to uh, swap the two registers which is available on the stack that is one more function. Other than this function, uh, the push and pop function which is typically for a stack is also going to be used. So, um, we are going to have 5 cases here, um, case 0 that is if n is a leaf node and it is the leftmost child of its parent. So, that is one situation where we generate just a simple load instruction, uh, where we will simply move the particular register into particular variable into a register. So, that is the first simple case, case 0. And case 1 will be where we have a subtree of the form uh, for which we generate code to evaluate n1 into a register r which is available in the top of the r stack and followed by the instruction operator name r. So, this is the next case where we will look at uh, generating the um, second statement corresponding to uh, the simple code generators function where you have opcode and then some uh, the name of the variable followed by the register. That register is available in the top of R stack. And the third case is uh, case 2, uh, where you have a subtree of the form where n1 can be evaluated without stores, but n2 is harder to evaluate than n1 as it requires more registers. So, here n1 is the left child of a particular interior node and n2 is the right child of the, parti of the particular interior node. And for this case, uh, uh, we swap the top two registers on R stack and then evaluate n2 into R. Okay, and then we remove R from R stack and evaluate N1 into at the top of the R stack. So, here what we did, what we do is if N2 label is more than N1's label, N2 has to be computed first. Since typically the top of the stack 
register is used by N1, okay. So, we have to swap the register such that these uh, uh, top but next that register can be used for computing the value of the node N2, okay. So, using that we generate and then we in the instruction is basically pushed on to and then finally, you do a operator R comma S so that it can basically be evaluated and the result could be available in the top of the stack S. Yes. So, another call to swap leaves R stack as it is when this call is a call of gen code basically begins. The fourth case which is nothing but case 3, it is similar to case 2 but uh, here the left subtree is harder than the right subtree. But here what happens is since left subtree has to be computed first, we do not do a swap of R stack, okay. We start evaluating directly the R uh, directly the left subtree before putting uh, before evaluating the right subtree. And the last case is it occurs when both subtrees requires R or more registers with to evaluate without any store. That is here uh, we already know how many registers are required to compute a particular DAG. Now supposing the number of registers available um, available in the R stack is less than the total number of registers required by uh, the particular basic block. In that case, we have to go for case 4 where we will be using a memory based instruction to issue and that will be computed using the memory itself rather than using registers. So, here uh, to support this case, what we do is we have to have a stack of memory where again it is going to be a uh, stack of memory. So, T0, T1, T2, etc. will be available there. So, this is the last case. Now, the algorithm here is uh, very simple uh, where uh, this is case 0. So, case 0 what are we looking at? We are looking at simply issuing a move command where n is a left leaf representing an operand name and n is the leftmost child of its parent, okay. It is a leaf node and it should be the leftmost leaf of its parent. So, in that case I simply say issue a command move the variable name onto uh, the uh, register available in the top of the stack, top of R stack. So, supposing if I have the variable name as A and uh, R naught is my top of the stack register, I will issue a command here move A comma R naught. Now, uh, this is the um, terminating case and uh, the other case will be if N is an interior node whose operator is op, OP and uh, whose uh, left child is N1 and right child is N2. So, this is the scenario. In that case, what we do? We have to look at case 1, 2 or 3 or 4 basically. So, what will I do? I will check whether if N1 is heavier or N2 is heavier. If N1 is heavier, I will call case 3. If N2 is heavier, I will call case 2 and if I am not able to match the number of registers, I have to call case 4. Now, case 1 will be called on one particular situation where label of N2 is equal to 0. That is, this is going to be a special case where I will be looking at the last but uh, uh, I mean the last level of a particular uh, DAG. So, label of N2 means what we already assigned uh, uh, the labels to N1 and N2 such that if N, N1 is a left child you assign and if it is a leaf you assign a value of 1 and if N2 is a right child you assign a value as 0 if it is a leaf node. So, uh, that resulted in computing an interior node which is the last but one interior node can be computed uh, with just one register. So, that is the reason here we are going on to case a uh, label of N2. Now, before looking at whether it is left heavy or right heavy, we have to check whether am I computing the last but one level of my DAG tree, okay. So, that is what we are trying to look at here. So, if label of N2 equal to 0, then uh, let the name be up uh, the operand be represented by N2 and uh, so then you have to call gen code of N1. So, in that case what you do is you have to look at gen code of N1 meaning that call it with the left child, call this algorithm recursively with the left child. So, in that case again it will come to this scenario because typically that case it will be z case 0 where you will be having a left leaf and then you have to issue this command and then followed by that you have to issue this operator command. So, when I say label of N2 is equal to 0, I am talking about a situation where it is nothing but the, the interior node happens to be the last but one level of the DAG. So, in that case what will I do? I have to compute the left child by moving that variable into a register, okay and then that is what is done by this particular statement out here, the gen code uh, of N1. This will typically end up with this or it can basically be called with something else also, but 
ultimately speaking this is what is going to basically happen it can be it can basically follow under case 2 or 3 but uh, to be on a very simpler note uh, it will be the last but one level if that is going to be your situation so it will basically call this first which will be essentially this instruction of move command and then followed by then i have to do an op okay that is also done so uh, the next one is uh, case 2 uh, in case 2 what we do is we will check whether uh, the label of n1 um, less than label of n2 less than label of and label of n1 is less than r okay so here label of n1 is less than label of n2 means i am talking about where n2 is heavier so this is what we said as case 2 if n2 is heavier and only uh, not only that i will also check whether you have here uh, less than r is it going to be uh, overshooting the number of registers if that is the case i will basically have um, call case uh, 4 so i will do that okay so in that is what i do i swap r stack so I, if i swap r stack i have changed the position of the registers available in the stack as r0 comma r1 and then i do a gen code of n2 okay uh, i'll call with the right subtree okay that right subtree will go through any of these and then I will do what I have to pop R stack okay and then I have to push uh, calling that as R okay and then I have to call with gen code of N1 with whatever is av available in the stack now. So uh, that will basic and then I have to use a command operator R which is the popped stack content uh, dot top of R stack. So top of R stack will have the N1 evaluated and this R has got N2 evaluated. So I will issue a command operator which is the interior nodes label with uh, the, the N2 followed by N1. This is one more and then I will have to push this R stack ba back onto uh, I mean R back onto R stack and then I have to now swap. Now swapping basically ensures that N1 which was computing is available in the top of the stack itself. So this is what it basically do does. So you have to first swap, swapping because n2 is heavier so to compute n2 n2 is typically computed at the i mean n was n1 is typically computed as the top of the register and therefore i have to swap and uh, second thing is i have to uh, compute n2 completely using the same gen code algorithm and then i have to pop this register once i pop this register i will issue a i will call gen code with n1 i will then uh, issue this particular command print just operating on the interior node using the popped register and what is available in the top of the stack and then I have to push this register back onto the stack. Now what happens N2 will be the computation of N2 will have available will be available in the topmost register. I swap these two contents to ensure that the topmost register always contains what is to be evaluated by the left child of a particular interior node. Now case 3 is just the reverse of case 2 where uh, I will call gen code of N1 first. I will pop, I will call gen code of end, I need not swap here that is the only difference between case 2 and case 3. So this is what we have done and then I have to push, anyway I have popped one value, I have pushed. The swap alone is basically not available in case 3. Now case 4 is where the labels of the nodes N1 and N2 which is the left and right children of an interior node that has labels greater than or equal to the total number of available registers, then I have to basically call. Uh, gen code of n2 and t is equal to pop of t stack now this t stack is nothing but temporary register area where it is going to basically be a, a set of memory locations and then I will do this move I uh, will then call gen code of n1 I will push this stack back into r and uh, because gen code uses only uh, the stack reg uh, r register uh, stack r stack basically and then I have to push this uh, so you these things are operating both on memory as well as on the top of the R stack. So this is what is the algorithm. Now let us take out this particular example uh, where uh, we have got uh, this is the already uh, uh, we have done labeling of this tree only earlier. So this is what it basically is available. So I have 1 0 1 0 this is 1 and a 1 and this is 1 2 and 3. So look at this uh, this gen code of A will result in case 0. Gen, gen code of this node T1 will result in case 1 because right child's label is 0. Similarly, for uh, evaluating T2, 
it will fall under case 1 because right child's label is 0 okay and uh, uh, this interior node okay this interior node will have uh, e equal labels basically so in that case i can evaluate either this or that first so depending upon whichever is, has been done less than or equal to or less than and uh, similarly to evaluate this particular node the root node uh, n2 is heavier so i have to do a swap and then basically uh, call gen code of n2 first and then gen code of n1 and then i have to integrate them together to get the code of uh, corresponding to the root node okay so uh, let us take this example so i'm going to call the input with gen code of t4 okay so i will have here uh, corresponding to t4 i have two registers r1 r0 this is what i said the left register i mean so the left subtree has a label of 1 right subtree has a label of 2 okay so since it right subtree is heavier i have to look use case 2 here so case 2 means call gen code of t3 that is for the right child in that case what happens i have to swap uh, the registers and then call gen code of n2 okay so i have swapped the registers and i have called gen code of t3 now if you remember t3 is here okay t3 has got uh, same labels so in that case it is going to be evaluating on the uh, left child will be given priority okay left subtree will be given priority so what happens is case 3 so i'll call gen code of e which is going to be case 0 so if it is case 0 i'll simply issue a move command okay and then uh, the control will get transferred uh, back to t3 it has to continue at where it left it's a recursive call so in that case what happens is i will pop the register so i have popped r1 i have only r0 so gen code of t2 that is the interior node so that case basic i mean the interior node will have a left label as 1 right label as 0 so if the right label is 0 i have to simply call gen code of c which is again case 0 and then this is the this is the command for gen code of c and then i have to call uh, print uh, add d comma r not because that is how basically this case will terminate so it'll, again it will fall under case 1 so case 1 will call uh, the left child and then issue this command so this will complete this particular situation and then gen code of t2 will be subtract r not comma r1 this is corresponding to this particular swap gen code of e case okay this corresponds to gen code of e case so where i did a subtract of r0 comma r1 i have to now push something back onto the register okay calling gen code of t1 and then i'll call gen code of a here again same thing move a comma r0 print and b comma r0 okay so r0 again is going to be case 0 this is case 1 so case 1 will basically have a move followed by an operand uh, operator related call and then i have to do a subtract r1 comma r0 subtract r1 comma r0 that's going to be your root so the answer will be in r0 which will be the top of the register okay top of the r stack uh, register stack r stack okay so this is what we have done so where the labels of the uh, code gen algorithm are used for generating the final code now um, multi register operation it supports only um, okay the code gen which we have done so far supports only one register based operation that is move a comma r not add b comma r not etc if you have to support multiple registers then the label algorithm has to be changed such a way that if you have uh, the labels of l1 and l2 do not match then you assign the interior label as 2 where you have one register for each of the uh, left and right children respectively uh, other case will be simply adding it by 1 if l1 is equal to l2 you assign uh, increment the number of registers by 1 to compute the interior node okay so that is what is the next one and i can also use some algebraic properties for uh, dag computation where uh, you can swap the left and right sub no, uh, right nodes uh, to effectively use a code generation algorithm to incorporate associative property or commutative property of uh, algebraic uh, laws so uh, one more thing is the common sub expression need not be recomputed that can also be adopted here now uh, so this is one approach to code generation the next approach is called as a dynamic programming based approach to code generation where the input will be again a directed acyclic graph only 
okay the input will be a DAG but the DAG will be uh, labeled with uh, the computation cost of a particular interior node. Now we already know that for a particular DAG how many registers are required to compute okay till the root. Now supposing I want two registers to compute okay. So what we will do is we will compute the cost of computing an interior node or rather every node we will start from the leaf node. What is the cost of computing a particular interior node when there are no registers, when there are one register, when there is two registers okay. So we will compute it as when there are no registers, when there is one register and when there are two registers we will just check that and we will assign the cost there. Now this cost computation is done on a dynamic programming strategy that is dynamic programming strategy means what given a choice I will look at all possible combinations and I will adopt the one which has the least value. So in this case my overall aim is to reduce the instruction cost. So what I would do is I will check whether whichever is cheaper I will use that cost as a basis for computing a particular interior node with that many number of registers okay and it is a bottom up fashion it is a bottom up approach finally the root will be uh, also having a label which will have the corresponding cost for computing that interior that node at a cost of uh, at a cost with no registers with one register or with two registers. So what happens is you have to compute bottom up for each node n of the expression tree t an array c of cost in which the ith component c of i is the optimal cost of computing the subtree s rooted at n into a register assuming i registers are available for the computation. So this is what I have just now explained i registers how do we know we know that because you already have labeled the tree okay. Then you traverse the tree using the cost vector to determine which subtrees of t must be computed into memory okay. So this is the approach and traverse each tree using the cost vectors and associated instructions to generate the final target code. The code for the subtrees computed into memory locations is generated first okay. So this is the three step procedure where you compute the cost first and then traverse the tree from bottom up fashion use the instruction already known to you and then generate the instructions accordingly depending upon how many registers are going to give you the optimal cost okay. The assumption here in this algorithm is uh, only two registers are available. Uh, I mean whatever example you are going to consider we assume that you have only two registers and uh, these are my instructions. So uh, my instruction is not going to be now a move or a um, add etc. My instruction is going to take the form as indicated here. So ri is equal to mj uh, then uh, which means that uh, uh, move the memory content into register ri. Then I have ri is equal to ri operator rj. So what does it mean? Uh, it is something like adding ri and rj and the result will be in ri okay and then the next one will be ri operator mj okay. So now this is very careful this has to be watched very carefully ri is in the, uh, the left subtree and mj is in the right subtree. So if I have to compute this result will be in ri okay. And then this is simply says ri is equal to rj where I am just moving the contents of rj into ri also. This is just a register copy and then this is the memory based copy where I will remove the register content into memory. So uh, this is uh, mem copy, this is register copy, this is register register copy okay. So ri operator rj means the left subtree could be in a register, right could also be in a register. I can operate that and then result will be in the left subtrees register that is the condition. Second one here is ri operator mj. Now I am assuming only that these instructions are available because uh, the textbook uh, Aho Sethi Ulman talks about only these instructions. You can also add additional instructions if required okay. But for a understanding purpose we are looking, looking at only these instructions and one more thing is all these instructions are assumed to have unit cost okay. So this will cost you one unit ri is equal to ri operator rj that is also going to cost us only one unit that is the basis for our example okay. So cost of computing a node which is in memory involves 0. So if it is if a variable is already in memory then uh, that uh, computing that particular node is going to cost us 0 for um, memory based instruction and then uh, we also assume that you have only unit cost for all these instructions. Now let us uh, look at this example this is what we have computed 
okay this is the final result um, let us see how we get this so as you could see i am having a vector here which has got uh, three values now this three values correspond to um, cost of computing this node with no registers with one register and with two registers okay now uh, we will explain how this is being formulated this dag this tree expression tree is similar to what we have already done in the previous example also uh, the operators have basically been uh, changed which is okay uh, we, as of now we are looking at uh, multiplication is also going to be costing me one unit uh, addition is also going to be costing me one unit according to this example which you have basically taken so but the tree structure is similar to what we know so therefore this tree can be computed using two registers that we already know now let us look at this computation so cost of moving a variable uh, we are looking at the leaf nodes to start with cost of moving a variable with no registers is zero because the variable is in the register itself okay and then cost of moving a variable with one or two registers is one using the instruction ri is equal to mj so i can move mj into ri so whether i have two registers or one register if i have to move the variable into a register that is going to cost me only one unit so ri is equal to mj so um, cost of computing this particular node the leaf node will be 0 comma 1 comma 1 because with two registers also i have to issue the same instruction only with one register also I have to issue the same instruction only therefore the cost of computing the interior node is going to be only 0 comma 1 comma 1 so you can see that all these instructions are going to have 0 1 1 the next node is at uh, 3 comma 2 comma 2 okay we will see how this is getting computed uh, let us look at this last but one node so you have to find all possible cost and choose the one with the least cost okay so i have here two option computing a particular node with no registers okay so what i should do is i but of, of course i don't have a memory based instruction according to my instruction set so what i will do is i will move to a register compute it okay and then transfer the information back to my memory okay so uh, the instruction would be i can move mj to ri i can do a ri operator mj result is an ri move ri back to mj so this is the next option so this is going to costing going to cost me three units alternately i can say ri is equal to mj rj is equal to mi so i am going to get two variables into two registers ri comma rj and then i can say ri is equal to ri operator rj and i can say mj is equal to ri this is going to cost us one unit so totally this will cost me four unit whereas this will cost me only three units okay since this is going to cost me only three units i will choose that as my representation so i will use this so dynamic programming is used basically here where i have two possibilities i will choose the one with the least value so using cost of computing the last but one level node with no registers will be three so we had a three comma two comma two so that is the three here okay the next one is uh, um, with one register okay with one register will be exactly similar to this but i am not moving this value back into the memory okay that is the only thing i am trying to do here so um, this is the same thing this is because it is already in memory only so i have to move it to register i can then use ri is equal to ri operator mj since i can use one register i need not move this back to memory okay that is going to cost me two units on the other hand i can if i am going to use two registers ri is equal to mj rj is equal to mi i am moving both into the register i can use this ri will cost me one unit so mj is equal to ri this is going to cost me one this is one more option where i can it's going to cost me four units so i'll compare two with four so i will use only one register so i will this is going to be the cheaper one of the two the next one will be um, this one where uh, again i can it's similar to the previous one only i could use two registers okay i can free one register but this is cheaper compared to using it using two registers therefore that is also going to be only two so this computation is also going to be 
3 comma 2 comma 2. So, that is why the next level also had a 3 comma 2 comma 2. So, cos vector the last but one level is 3 comma 2 comma 2. The next level will be we had a 5 comma 5 comma 4 the root was actually 8 comma 8 comma and 7. So, compute the left subtree with 2 registers available into register R0, compute the right subtree with 1 register available into register R1 and use the instruction add R0, R0, R1 to compute the root. So, this sequence has a cost 2 plus 5 plus 1, okay. So, that is why we have done here. This is similar to that only and uh, this sequence will also have a cost of 8. So, with one register it is going to cost us 2 units, so eight, 7 units means I can use that itself for my computation, okay. So, the first uh, example here, the first instruction will be R0 is equal to C, then R1 is equal to D, then R1 is equal to R1 by E. So, this, this node requires only one register, we have done that. Then its parent R0 is equal to R0 into R1. Now, I want R0, but R1 could be reused. So, R1 is equal to A, R1 is equal to R1 minus B, R1 is equal to R1 plus R0 which is the root computation. So, this is going to be computing in this particular fashion where I am going to use only 2 registers with a computation cost of totally. Um, so, as you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we saw that the root had a 8 comma 8 comma 7 with 2 registers. So, you, you if you assume we have assumed unit cost for this computation. So, each I have 7 instructions both all will basically is going to cost me 1 unit each means I am going to have a cost of 7. So, this is what was done with the dynamic programming approach. So, where we kind, kind of had multiple possibilities of computing cost and then we chose the one with the least value. So, on summarizing this module we have looked at uh, the DAG based code generation algorithm where we looked at uh, the labels which was assigned to all the uh, nodes. The labels correspond to typically the number of registers required to compute a particular interior node that was used as a basis to generate code. So, where we had 5 cases to handle and uh, K0 is the simplest of all and it is happened to be the leftmost leaf, leaf node of a particular parent. And then case 1 was uh, where it is the last but one level and case 2 was a left, subby, left heavy subtree and case 3 was a uh, sorry case 2 was a right heavy subtree and case 3 was a left heavy subtree and case 4 is the labels of the regis of the interior nodes has a value greater than that of the number of registers available that was also discussed. And then after that we looked at the next uh, alternate to code generation which is nothing but a dynamic programming approach to code generation. So, with that we conclude this module and uh, thank you.